before starting with the transformation let's start with a basic sketch suppose you have a sketch fx equals to 5 minus x now if we want to plot this these are all the values of x and once we put the value of x we get the corresponding value of y that means if you put minus 3 here 5 minus minus 3 is 5 plus 3 which is 8 and on and on you put all of the values for sketching once you consider x value and y value together as a dot you get something like this that means for minus 3 you put a dot 8 minus 2 7 minus 1 6 and on and on and once you join that you'll find some sort of a picture so this is a plotting of course we don't have to do any graph plotting all we have to do is sketch in a transformation an original sketch is given let's get back once you have this now suppose you have to do the transformation of y equals to absolute value of fx absolute value means you just get rid of the negative sign whatever you have the value would be without any sign at all meaning get rid of the negative sign that's it so if I have minus 3 in, in at the position of uh, x for absolute value of fx this value would have the absolute value that means 8 would be 8 for minus 2 if y is 7 absolute value of 7 meaning fx is 7 because if you remove the negative sign from 7 since 7 has no negative sign it will be exactly the same so for positive numbers when you do absolute value they are unchanged but look here when x equals to 6 we have minus 1 so the absolute value of minus 1 is 1 absolute value of minus 2 is 2 so you see the only the region that is uh, negative only those region are affected when you have an absolute value so here if this is the original sketch so for absolute value of fx what would happen every value of y that is negative it would be positive so they would look like graphically as if they reflected remember this whenever we draw absolute value of fx transformation because only the negative values are affected they would become positive and everything else will remain the same all the values of y that are positive once you do absolute value nothing will be changed because absolute value of a positive number is also the same positive number only the negative numbers are affected for that reason reason this would be same because it is positive and only the ones that are negative they would be reflected so once you have this it looks anything below the x-axis is reflected so remember whenever you have a transformation for absolute value of fx there is a reflection on the x-axis that's what it means graphically now the next one if you think about another transformation this time not absolute value of fx but only f absolute value of x that means here the transfer the absolute value is not on the entire function but only on x in this type of a transformation you have to remember this x is not being used it is the absolute value of x that is used so absolute value of minus 3 is 3 absolute value of minus 2 is 2 absolute value of minus 1 is 1 absolute value of 0 is 0 but the positive numbers are unchanged so the absolute value of x only the negative number values of x are affected so this table it's more or less if you notice 3 2 1 uh, 1 2 3 these things are more or less the same since we don't have the negative values of these these cannot be shown here but anyway if you notice once we had minus 3 here the value was 8 but the absolute value of x completely removed the negative sign from this so it became 3 so the value of y for 3 is this one 2 so we put here 2 
Previously it was minus 2 and the value of y for minus 2 is 7 because 5 minus minus 2 is 7. But if you do absolute value of x, that means minus 2 becomes 2. So the value of here, instead of 7, we put the value of 2 which is 3. So that way the values of x that are affected, we are just putting the same values of y for the positive values of x. So in that case, what is happening if you take the original picture? The original picture looks like this. And if you want to do the transformation, you will notice that every positive value of x from 0 to 10, they are unchanged. So 0, 5, 0, 5, 1, 4, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2. Every positive values, they are unchanged. They are literally the same. So only ones are affected is the negative values of x because absolute value of x makes them positive. So what we have, we have a copying of these here. So eventually the transformation looks like this. Notice here, every positive value of x has the same as the original y equals to fx. It is only the negative values of x which is because of the modulus of x are becoming positive. So minus 3 is eventually giving a value of 2. So you can notice that this is a reflection on the y-axis because of this region. You can you can notice that these are these are the same minus 3 2 and this is 3 2. So this is sort of a reflection on the y-axis. Then you have 2 3 minus 2 is also 3. 1 gives a value of 4 but minus 1 since it becomes 1 because of the absolute value of x is also giving the value of 4. It's sort of a reflection you can notice that it's sort of a reflection on the y-axis this time. So you have to remember when we do this it's a reflection this is a reflection on the y-axis but you need you have to notice that you we remove from the original picture uh, the portion that was on the negative side of x we remove that and we just reflect this side on the other side that's what we do remember first whatever was on the negative uh, x-axis we remove that and then we reflect the positive x-axis of positive x-axis uh, portion of fx and reflect on the y-axis. So this is the transformation that is going on. Let's do an example. We have y equals to fx given. We have to do first transformation y equals to absolute value of fx. So absolute value of fx means you take below the x-axis since the negative y is going to become the positive y so you take anything below the uh, x-axis and reflect it above the x-axis now one thing you have to remember while reflecting it has to be as if it has been reflected you cannot just draw and change the shape the shape is very very important and especially here it has to be pointed because you're breaking this and you're just putting it upwards so this sketch is going to be always label x-axis, y-axis and the origin so this is going to be the same so this is like this so this is the let me redraw this so this is here so up to his here is the same this is minus 3 2 now what happens this portion is going to be reflected upwards so it's going to be like this like this so this portion is going to be reflected upwards and this point that was 2 minus 4 the negative 4 is going to be now positive so this is the transformation you have to remember when you do this the shape here it has to be pointed because this has been broken down like that next do the tra let's do the transformation of y equals to f absolute value of x now absolute value of x means the positive portion of x-axis is going to be reflected on the negative portion that means anything that was in negative x because of the absolute value of x it becomes positive so this portion will be removed so let me sketch this first label x-axis and y-axis and the origin let me sketch this first with the positive portion of the x-axis so this is the
like this so this is the sketch on the right hand side of the y-axis or the positive x-axis sketch now the negative portion because of absolute value of x is removed and this portion is reflected like this remember there's a little bit of curve a little bending going on here so remember that so if this is the reflection it would be minus 2 and minus 4 the value of y is the same x is being reflected so remember in absolute value of x it's a reflection on the y-axis let's do another example so here we have this fx so y equals to absolute value of fx if you notice this the entire picture is above the x-axis that means we don't have to do anything the absolute value of fx and y equals to fx they're going to have the same picture because there's nothing there's no negative y so the sketch is just copy the sketch in exams oftentimes they give a sketch where you have to do nothing but you have to remember the technique so you just copy the sketch like this so this is going to be minus 3 by 2 0 this is going to be 0 4 and this is going to be 3 6 you have to do nothing at all the next let's do y equals to f absolute value of x here so we take the sketch on the positive side of the x-axis on the right hand side of the picture so we take this so it's this so this would be 3 6 and this would be 0 4 and because of the absolute value of x this portion becomes completely removed and this is reflected on the y-axis so that would be like this so this would be minus 3 6 now apart from these two transformation there is one more transformation that is given in the C3 exam and that one is y equals to f inverse x we can call this the inverse transformation the idea here is all you have to do if you have a point x coordinate a y coordinate b you just switch it around make the x coordinate into the y coordinate and make the y coordinate into the x coordinate that's it just change it around so if you have a sketch like this suppose it is like this the x coordinate is 0 and 3 and this is 2 minus 2 and this is y equals to fx all you have to do in order to uh, change the uh, transformation and make it into y equals to f inverse x is you have to change x was 0 so y the x value will now be the y value so x is 3 now you change the x to y so this would be now 3 so this is 0 this is 3 it was 2 minus 2 now it would be minus 2 2 so this would be minus 2 minus 2 2 minus 2 2 so all the x has been converted to y now the shape it's obvious the shape is now going to be like this so what was on the x-axis is now on the y-axis so when you have an transform when you have a transformation which is y equals to f inverse of x the idea is to change the x into the y and to change the y into the x it is a bit uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult to remember the shape what would the shape look like for that reason another way of remembering this is to remember the shape can be figured out by remembering y equals to f inverse x is nothing but a reflection on the line y equals to x so if we reflect this picture on the line y equals to x then this thing by the mirror image would become like this if you if you notice this this becomes this and this goes here like this mirror image this so it would look like if you think about this it would look like this so this is that's why if you can think about the shape think about y equals to x reflection on the line 
y equals to x whenever you're doing y equals to f inverse x and you're finding it difficult uh, to figure out how the shape might look like remember it's a reflection on the line y equals to x let's do an actual example the question is do the transformation of y equals to f inverse x give the x-axis y-axis an origin always remember this is b1 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 for the labeling okay a x is a y is 0 so you change the x into the y so this is a must be negative because it's on the negative side of the x-axis so this is going to be negative y so a would be this so this would be 0 a so we change the x and the y we just switch it around this is y is negative b because below the x-axis negative y so this would be 0 b so we can have an idea this is b 0 so 0 b becomes b 0 okay now the shape now this shape is like this if we have the mirror y equals to x then the shape would be something like this if this is the mirror then this is reflected here if you can just notice this this is reflected here and this is reflected on this line like this like this so that means this is broken down this goes to that part this goes to that part so this becomes this this becomes actually if this is reflecting I made a mistake here because 0 B is going to come here because mirror goes reflection like that this is going to be B0 so this line here is going to be like this because 0 B is becoming B0 and this portion 0 A is going to be 0 A is going to A0 is going to be 0 A so it's going to be here it's going to be 0 a so this if this is the mirror it's going to be like this so it is more or less like this it's difficult to figure out it's like this so you just think about this picture this is a bit irregular let me do another something a bit easier if you have a question like this y equals to fx and your sketch is like this so this is minus 1 this is 2 and suppose this cuts here minus 3 now if you're asked to draw the transformation of y equals to f inverse x because these are the most common sums whenever you get a transformation of y equals to f inverse x and so minus 1 would be here minus 1 2 x is 2 so y would be 2 so y is minus 3 so x would be minus 3 and you know if you if you don't have to worry about that but if you did a reflection on this line it would look something like this so that's it